Hey, welcome to Joseph Crow's DIY speaker building. So here we have the 12 inch BNC coaxial. I recently purchased this back from my uh, friend that I had sold it to a number of years ago. And so in this video, we're gonna be uh, trying to develop a crossover for this speaker. We're going to be doing both passive and active and we're going to be comparing the two and also we're going to be developing a, an LCR circuit um, and we're going to be trying to push the crossover point on this as low as we possibly can and uh, seeing how good a sound quality we can get out of this driver. So let's get right into it. All right, so I'm just going to do a zoom out here. It's the summer rain base cabinet and I'm going to be mounting the BNC coaxial into this and I'm really eager to hear what it sounds like. Okay, so let's put this sucker in here. Hopefully it fits, I haven't actually checked. <laughs> Line up the holes, and no, oh, it's not actually. See how it rocks? That's not good. It's got kind of a boomy base to it when you tap on it. Um, so yeah, that's a problem. So plan B here is to actually take the baffle off with these eight screws and mount the driver from inside the cabinet, and the. The, uh, you can do that with this driver because it has the gasket on the front of the driver so the only problem is there's these ridges um, so as your high frequency comes out you're going to be having uh, edge diffraction uh, coming out of the cabinet so I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that I'll have to maybe put something in here to transition it so that we don't have as much diffraction so yeah let's uh, let's try that anyways Okay, so here it is mounted. We're going to do some measurements and it's, uh, you can kind of see it looks like a horn, which it is. Alright, so we're going to start by doing an impedance sweep of the high frequency. So here we go. Alright, so we have our major resonance at 1.6 kilohertz and you see these little small ripples here. That's probably uh, reflections through the horn. And then this is going to be a uh, breakup in the diaphragm. So we're actually, that's really good um, that we don't have any kind of modes or breakup in the, in the high frequency. So that's promising. Um, so I'm probably going to do a uh, digital crossover first just to try different crossover points. But really, um, we're going to want to have a 2K crossover point which is kind of high for a 12 inch uh, the the 12 inch is really going to start beaming and become directional at around 500 hertz so uh, I'm going to maybe investigate a way to get the high frequency to uh, get rid of this this notch or this peak in the in the resonance um, by doing an LCR filter passively and see if I can get the crossover point down to around one kilohertz and we're going to be much better if we can get the crossover down to that region. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, see if we can squash that impedance spike. So we're going to add our driver, we're going to tune, select tune, we're going to load the ZMA file uh, that we made from our um, DAT speaker test software. <clears throat> and so we're going to connect some wires, go across, Do the ground. Oops. Okay, so now after we've made the connection, you can see here the impedance spike that we saw in our uh, DATS test program. So we're going to add an LCR circuit. <clears throat> okay. 
going too fast here, but connect this up. Okay, you can see that it actually, um, the default values of one millihenry, uh, 10 microfarad, and uh, 10 ohms actually did a pretty good job of suppressing that impedance spike. We can probably take it a little further. We can open this up on the resistor, pull the resistance down a bit, and 6.2 resistance on there. And let's give that a try. I'm curious to see if a combination of active and, and passive can allow us to get our crossover point down to one kilohertz. Otherwise, um, we're gonna have a really nasty phase irregularity um, going through that impedance spike, which in my experience just is not what you wanna hear in your speaker. I'm here, um, inductors. That's a two. So I know two is definitely not going to work. <clears throat> These I pulled out of an old pair of speakers, but they don't have any value on them. They almost look like they might be one. So I can actually use the DAT speaker tester to measure the millihenry value of this inductor. It's not labeled, but I can um, measure it using the DAT speaker tester. So let's let's do that. Okay, so I've connected my mystery inductor to my DAT speaker test system. And so we're gonna go up to impedance analyzer and select on L, measure and inductor. So we simply click on test and it gives us the result. So that's good. We're 1.145. We're looking for one millihenry on XSIM for our LCR circuit. And it's also given us the DC resistance so we can also input that value as well. So <clears throat> switching over to XSIM, we're gonna tune this to say 1.145, and this was 745, I believe. So just go back and make sure, 767, sorry. Okay, so one problem that I encountered is I don't, actually have a resistor that's around 6.2. So I kind of got to work around this by adding a resistor in parallel and hopefully coming up with a combination that will get me to where I need to be. So I have a 10. Um, so I also have 16. So maybe I'll change this to 16. And that's pretty good. So yeah, a 10 and a 16 ohm resistor in parallel should uh, get me to where I need to be. Okay, so I got my, what are these here? 10 ohm resistors, brand new, still in the bag. And the uh, 16 ohm, so we're gonna use one of these. <clears throat> okay, so then we got our 10 uh, microfarad capacitor and our inductor that we had to measure. So there you go. And these are um, what I'm going to use to connect them instead of uh, just soldering. This will just allow me to do a quick test setup. So um, these just fit into here. And then you take your uh, micro screwdriver and tighten them down. And it just creates a bridge to your other components. So. This goes in the other end, tighten it down, okay so we got that and then I have a couple different ones but essentially it's the same kind of idea here. And then we'll open up the other end and we'll put our two resistors. So there you go, I got two resistors. That's our LCR circuit right there. So these are really handy to be able just to build something quickly and test it out. Okay, so we've connected our LCR circuit into our high frequency and we're gonna do an impedance sweep to see if it actually represents our simulation. Here we go. 
and there you have it. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly similar. So, and look at the phase. So we don't have anything really unusual happening in the phase. It's very benign and not really anything too severe as far as, um, so you want to be looking at how steep your impedance curve is. Anything that's steep is going to be highly reactive and we want to avoid that for uh, for a lot of reasons. So let's um, let's set up our active crossover and we'll do a comparison just listening on see what if there's a sound difference between having the LCR in place and and removing it from the circuit and seeing if there's actually a change in the sound quality. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an, uh, an active setup with this just to test out the different crossover points that sound the best with this particular coaxial. And to do that, we're going to use this, this guy. So this is the uh, Open DRC DA8. It's by Mini DSP, as you can tell. And so on the back here, we have eight out and, and one in. So this is uh, SP diff input digital only and we have eight analog output so we can um, custom tailor each output and so this as a two-way we're going to be only using uh, four out of these as a stereo setup but um, the nice thing about this is it has um, the ability to do what's called FIR uh, adjustments within this so you can load an FIR file into this and it'll actually correct your uh, phase response uh, in your speaker so we'll get to that later but essentially this thing is a powerhouse it comes it came out just recently by mini DSP and it opens up a whole new level as far as uh, speaker DSP processing and so to feed the mini DSP we have this this is a uh, high face Evo and it's uh, called a USB interface so we'll be coming out of our computer and we'll be going into the USB input on this and then all of the inputs are um, galvanically isolated with uh, transformers to eliminate all the noise uh, from the computer and so then we'll be coming out uh, of this we have a, a couple options for output unfortunately my open DRC doesn't have an AES digital input which would sound quite a bit better um, but we're gonna have to use just the SP diff the digital uh, output to connect to our uh, D mini DSP okay so with everything related to audio you really need a good power supply so this is something that I built uh, recently and it's got a uh, highly regulated power supply um, this will be for the mini DSP the mini DSP comes with a little solid state wall wart um, however it's very noisy and so this will help uh, feed our mini DSP with with really good clean power and the same can be said for the uh, USB interface here so really um, what I've done here is I've purchased a uh, Phoenix regulated power supply to feed the high face Evo so that we can get good clean power to that as well so there you have it, that's it for this week. Next week what we're going to do is we're going to have it set up here with our microphone. Uh, we're going to do some frequency response and phase response test plots and compare that to the results that we saw in XSIM using the DOT speaker tester. We're going to remove the LCR from the circuit and then do some measurements and see if um, we're going to correlate that back to the results that we saw in XSIM if there is a correlation. I don't know. I'm actually doing this to myself because I want to see. And um, if this is getting too dry, uh, let me know if you want to do something else um, or if you have any additional measurements that you want me to do, off axis for example. Um, yeah, and we're also going to push the crossover point as low as we possibly can get it. Using an uh, active crossover, we can get away with 48 dB uh, slopes. And so I always stuck or stuck with a two kilohertz crossover point on this driver. Um, and stay tuned; I'm going to get it down really low. So um, yeah, if you have any other comments or suggestions, uh, please click the like or subscribe. And we'll see you next week.